Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today, I think possibly for the second time, I want to talk to you about how I think that APS-C cameras may be a better choice for landscape photography than full frame. I know that sounds completely crazy, but hear me out. The specific reason I want to talk about is depth of field, but before we go down the depth of field road, a more obvious reason is size and weight. A lot of times when you're doing landscape photography you're hiking a long distance carrying all your gear so that you can arrive at a waterfall or a grand vista and then you get your camera out and take a picture but on the way there you've got to carry all that heavy gear so full frame gear is typically heavier than APS-C gear and medium format gear is even heavier, which to me it's completely crazy to use medium format cameras for landscape photography, which would be kind of the opposite of how a lot of current thinking is. So now let's get back to depth of field. If you're doing portrait photography or sports photography, even wildlife photography, a lot of times you want a shallow depth of field. You want your subject to be in focus and you want the background to be very blurred out. That gives nice subject separation. And in those situations, I think a full frame camera is often the best choice. You know, for wildlife or for sports, sometimes you need some really, really big lenses to, to use and it's easier to use an APS-C camera because you kind of get more reach, but you won't have as shallow a depth of field. But for landscape photography, a lot of times you want everything to be in focus. If you go to a beautiful waterfall and it's kind of in the distance, a lot of times the best compositions will have what's called a foreground interest. Something close to the camera in the foreground that is interesting to look at and kind of ties the whole picture together and makes it more interesting than just the obvious shot of the waterfall. So, if you want something really close to the camera to be in focus and something uh, a longer distance away from the camera to be in focus, you need a lot of depth of field. And, you know, there's, uh, there's a technique called focus stacking where you can take a number of photographs, one focused on something close to you, maybe one focused in, in the middle and one focused in the background and kind of blend those all together. And, you know, that's uh, easy for some photographers, a little more difficult for other photographers, and maybe, just maybe, not necessary every time. So let's think about why I'm saying that APS-C is possibly better. If you, there's, there's two ways to make a shallow depth of field. One is with a larger aperture, you know, a smaller aperture number, the the smaller the number, the larger the aperture, and the more shallow the depth of field. So that's great. And another way is focal length. The, the longer the lens, the more millimeters the lens is, the more shallow the depth of field will be. The opposite is also true. The wider the lens you use, the more depth of field you get. So all you need to do is use a wider lens, but you also need to frame up your composition just right. So let's say you were using a full frame camera and you needed to frame your composition just right, you needed 40 millimeters. And at 40 millimeters, to get the entire shot in focus, you might have to stop all the way down to f16. Well, at f16, sometimes there's diffraction. Usually most lenses do their best from about f8 to f11 and any smaller aperture or larger aperture number you'll start to see diffraction and the overall sharpness of your image is less. So if that 40 millimeter shot on your full frame camera needed f16 on an APS-C camera you might be shooting at 24 or thereabouts and then at f8 or f11 you might be able to get the entire scene in focus without stopping down to f16. So that's what I'm saying. You can use, to get the same framing with an APS-C camera, 
you are always going to use a wider focal length than that exact same shot on a full frame camera. And wider always has more depth of field. It's important to remember that it's not the sensor size that is changing the depth of field. It's the focal length. Now the sensor size makes you change your focal length to get the same composition. Here's another example. A full frame camera might make a shot, uh, a nice landscape photography shot at 16 millimeters. That same shot on APS-C would be, depending on whether or not you're using Canon or Nikon or Sony, which have different uh, APS-C crops, that will be a 10 or 11 millimeter shot to get the exact same framing. Well, 10 or 11 millimeters has more depth of field because it's wider than 16 millimeters does. Same composition, more depth of field on the APS-C camera. And again, it's not because of the sensor size, it's because of the focal length used to get the same composition. So for that reason, plus the small and light size, I think that APS-C might be a better choice than full frame cameras for landscape photography. There is a caveat to all of this. On APS-C cameras, about the widest lens you'll find is 10 millimeters. And depending on your system, that is gonna be around 16 millimeters on Canon or 15 millimeters full frame equivalent. So if you need wider than 15 or 16 millimeters for your landscape photography, if you need a 14 millimeter, which you can get for full frame, and you can even get 12, I've got a 12 millimeter lens on order. If you need 12 millimeters full frame equivalent, you're probably not gonna find that on an APS-C camera. But those are kind of special scenarios. Usually 15 or 16 millimeters on the wide end is plenty wide for any landscape photography shot. Of course, you can use whatever system that you want to use for your landscape photography, full frame, medium format, APS-C, micro four thirds, the tiny sensor in your iPhone. They'll all get the job done. But for me, the kind of uh, happy medium between quality and great depth of field and light and easy to carry is APS-C. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.